particular clip features Brendan talking about being appreciative and thankful for his career. The funny thing about this clip is that nothing of what he's saying is wrong, but it's just interesting that he's only thinking like this because his career is on a bit of a downward trajectory. Ever since... Oh, Jesus Christ. The coffee acid reflux. Anyway, ever since Brian got fucking accused of rape, Chris D'Elia went down for his diddling shit and everybody kind of turned their back on Brendan because of the stuff he allegedly might have done to fucking Bobby Lee and shit. His career is going to be... Do, 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 do. So because of that, he's in a reflective mood now. Since Rogan's left as well and their relationship isn't what it once was, he's clearly feeling a little bit isolated. So now he's being reflective. Now he's being appreciative. And now he's understanding how good it was when he was first starting and having a little bit of um, gratitude um, about what he kind of went through, what he did, blah, de, blah, blah, blah. For me, I don't think there's nothing wrong with what he's saying, but the attitude's a bit too late. And also, it's not really centered in nothing real. He's only saying this because he's on a down trajectory. If he was up as he was before, still friends with Rogan, performing at a comedy mothership, he would never say this sort of shit. But still, it's good to hear regardless because it means there's a human in that guy after all. There's a human in Brendan Shaw after all. Let's hear him be appreciative of the place he's at now at the moment. Let's play all the success. You know how hard it is to get in the UFC, bud? Oh, come on. Then you come know how hard it is? Oh, why? Because of all the different leagues and how many people are trying to come on. Well, that, but then just take, you take it a step further. So, and it's taken me a long time for even for me to get this level. So I always felt like a failure at C, when I was in college because I wasn't Tim Tebow in college. Yeah. Felt like a failure when I got to the NFL because I wasn't uh, Tony Romo in the NFL. I felt like a failure when I got to the UFC because I wasn't Cain Velasquez. Yeah. Sure, then that's my... That's how that, I am. That's, that, that, I'm that, constantly critical. That was my myself. perspective, but... Just to quickly stop him here... Actually, no, you got to realize, when you step back, it's like, hold on. If I was eight years old and you go, hey, dude, you know you're going to play Division One college football? Not just, like, go and be on the team. You're going to play. I'd be like, holy shit, that's insane. Yeah. Cool. Then after that, you know you're going to get a shot with the Buffalo Bills? Like, oh, my God, this is nuts. Are you serious? Yeah, dude. And then after that, you know not only are you going to fight in the UFC, you're going to be ranking the top ten in the world. I'd go, get the fuck out of here. This is going to be the best life ever. You don't have that perspective when you're young. Yeah. It's taking so much work for me to step back and go, and it's because of my kids, step back and go, oh, damn, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. This is a cool story. I still don't do that. And oh, I was, very. I hey, Rodeo, take that fucking back, okay? Take that fucking back. No bosses in the chat. Zero bosses. So look, someone's getting fucking murdered somewhere outside of my fucking window. I keep telling you I live in a trap. You guys don't believe me. But take that fucking back road. You're right now. No bosses in the chat. No snitches in the chat, all right? Don't fob me in. Don't be a Randall. Don't be a fucking Randall. Come on, man. Give me good karma, man. I'm sick. <coughs> I'm sick. <laughs> all right? <laughs> I'm sick. I'm sick. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's continue. <laughs> Um, going back to what Brendan's saying here in this clip is fucking hilarious because, um, I said before, I think my theory on why Brendan's so sort of delusional with comedy and stuff and why he doesn't, doesn't maybe not, not give it up, but doesn't maybe pivot it and no, or maybe turn it into another thing. Like do what I said before, like, you know, maybe like live TFAT K shows, variety type shows would work better than Brendan getting on the mic and just standing there doing stand up conventionally because he's just not funny. He just doesn't have it. But one of the reasons I thought why he's so stubborn about comedy and I always theorized was that his whole life actually has been in his head a failure because his ultimate dream was always to be a football player, but it never worked out, right? So quite early on, he realized he's never going to make it in the NFL and he had to start doing other things. But in the other things he did, he also never really made it either. So when he finally got into stand-up comedy and he started to see some traction, he started to sell tickets, he was in demand, he was getting booked in places, clearly that was a sign from the universe to him that he finally found his calling. All the other things he did, even though he really wanted them, they were never really meant for him. But this is what was meant for him because it's been the one thing that's given him the lifestyle he always wanted, giving him the family he wanted, the wife he wanted, the friends he wanted, blah, 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 blah. So that's why he's so protective of it and doesn't want to let it go despite all the obvious signs that he's not good at it and people don't respect what he does and blah, 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 and they take the piss out of it. The fact that it brought him all this kind of success in life 
is what basically keeps him going. So I can kind of understand that side of things. The only thing that's sad, like I said before, the only thing that's sad about it is that it's only happening now because his career is at a downward trajectory. If he was going upwards or somewhat the same level before, he wouldn't be looking back and being appreciative of where he's come and what he's overcome, what he's achieved so far. He'd be just kind of looking for the next big thing to kind of hit. Because for whatever reason also, he has this weird thing where he's comparing himself to other successful comedians who are not only way more experienced than him, but just naturally funnier. And obviously, we all know the quote of comparison is a thief of all joy. I also think comparisons without any kind of context is going to send you into fucking, you know, in a luli bin. Luli bin, luli bin, luli tunes bin, whatever that term is, right? It's going to send you in a fucking madhouse if you start comparing yourself without context. If you start comparing yourself one year in to somebody that's five years in or somebody that's got a natural proclivity to the thing that you're doing, it makes no complete sense. He should just be doing his own thing in his own lane and not looking at it from the conventional eyes of like, oh, I'm not as far as where Jesselnik is. I'm not as far as where Dave Chappelle is. I should be doing places like Sebastian Mansalco. I should be fucking selling out arenas like Fluffy. No, 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 no. You have no business looking that far ahead. You're not even good enough for what you're doing now at the time you're available. Because like I said before, Brendan's like nearly 10 10 years into comedy and he's still no better than when he actually first started i can say that because i've always gonna die on the hill that i think you'd be surprised is a better stand-up special than gringo pappy that's my own opinion but even if you don't agree with me you can't say that gringo pappy is like way better than you'd be surprised it's definitely not three years better it might be a year better but not three years so how how bad is he going to be at the 10 year mark and usually the 10 year mark for most comedians is when they come into their groove they kind of start knowing themselves they get you know they start feeling their power they start growing and evolving and this guy's been the same overall so as good as this is as great as it is to see him being reflective and kind of being appreciative of a position, it's come too late, in my personal opinion, because it also isn't framed in the right way. He's looking at it just more sort of like, hey, man, I'm a badass, I'm a big guy, I smash that, smash that. It's like, bruh, you still got a lot to do, you still got a lot to learn, right? Let's just kind of humble it down a bit, let's realise why we're at where we're at, and let's try to make amends where we can to get ourselves back where we need to get to, because as much as it's funny to laugh at this guy, as much as it's funny to laugh at this guy, I can't deny it. A part of me loves a good redemption story. Wouldn't it be fucking amazing if he brings out a fucking 30 minute special that's actually 30 minutes and it's jokes from minute zero to minute 30, back to back, boom, boom, bang, bang, bang. And he smashes it and walks off the stage. Wouldn't that actually be quite a decent thing to say? Fucking finally, this guy's finally put together a decent special. That'd be pretty good to see. Is it likely to happen? Of course not. But... Who knows? Who fucking knows? But his brain is still all over the place comparison-wise. Like, I think that's why I honestly think that Joe, Joey Diaz thing that he said to Lee Sayat was some of the best advice I've ever heard. When Lee Sayat was, you know, on the church of what's happening, Lee Sayat's complaining, oh, Joey Diaz, why don't you take me on tour? Why don't you make me let me open for you? And Joey Diaz basically said without saying, I don't want you to end up like Brendan Schaub. I want you to basically start with people that you should be starting with at your at your stage of your career, whether it's two years in, one year in, you should be hanging out with open micers and people that are just like getting, you know, hustling and trying to do their things. You have no business hanging around with me, Duncan Trussell and all those guys because we're like legit. We've been doing this for like 20 years or whatever it may be. And it's only going to make you have a false sense of where you're at because you're hanging around with us, you're having beers with us, you're sniffing cocaine with us, you're smashing all these underage prostitutes with us. But in reality... You're not really one of us. You're not on our level yet. And you're going to get this weird sense of where you're at. And you're going to expect things that you probably shouldn't be getting at that stage. And it's going to make you all messed up. And I think that's Brendan's issue. This is this is evidence. This is kind of representation of what happens when you accept a Showtime special two or three years in. That's what they should tell everybody. Every stand-up comedian that asks advice from a senior person, that senior person should tell them, never, ever accept a stand-up special two to three years in. Because the damage that could be done to you long term can sometimes be irreversible. Imagine getting a HBO stand-up special when you're only three years into your stand-up comedy career. It's really impossible for you to be humble. 
It's impossible for you to kind of take criticism. It's impossible for you to maybe reflect on your career and make adjustments. Because if you did it right year one, year two, year three, why would you change year four, year five, year six? So that's what happened to Brendan, unfortunately. Unfortunately so. But again, what do I fucking know? I'm just a random guy over here talking out of my fucking bum hole. I don't know what the hell is going on over there. Absolutely no idea whatsoever.